This is the Barco ADVM14 Pro Monitor. The firmware in the monitor indicates 1999. The catalogs I've read are around the year 2003, so you can slot the monitor's age into that time frame. It's 14 inches in size, uses a curved CRT tube, has a fairly high line count of 750 lines. It's got a dot pitch of 0.28 millimeters. I'm gonna take the camera off, the tripod, and have a look around. If you're wondering about that snake rail and roll music being a bit slow, it is the PAL version, so that would explain it. Uh, it's rather dark here, so I'm gonna to have to adjust the lighting to get to those front buttons a bit better, hang on. Okay, so Barco, they don't mind putting a lot of buttons on the monitors. Let's go up to the top, there's your badge, Barco. And here we start on the left hand side, contrast, brightness, saturation, hue, etc, etc. What are those two blank ones there for? I don't even know what they do. Uh, there's your power button, video, you choose which input you want. Function, menu, there's some preset numbers there, I'm sure that you can have preset values for each of those numbers and there's some navigation uh, service hole there connector um, now the monitor does have an on-screen menu you think it might not given so many buttons but um, it does and it's it's interesting or nice to see a different sort of a different style rather than Sony for a change or JVC Panasonic um, you can tell that the monitor is fairly high has a fairly high line count because the text on the OSD there is very sharp uh, it's nice and there's the firmware that you can see it dated there give you an idea of the age on the thing uh, the casing on the monitor is all metal there's really no plastic maybe those buttons at the front sort of a rubbery plastic let's go around the back uh, on the left side you can see that there are a few connectors there, remote, tally, and some expansion one there, RS485, uh, up the top there's connector, SDI, and there's your badging, made in Belgium, Barco, and your model number is there, ADVM14, and it takes 100 to 240 volts. And over here is the actual um, badge from where the dealer was there in Melbourne. Eh? Give them a call. Maybe they've got some old monitors sitting around. And finally, on the connector side of things, I'll just take out what's plugged in. You've got 75 ohm termination there. Now, coded, that's just composite input. I'm not sure why they call it coded, but I believe there are two inputs for composite video that you can see in front. I don't think it's an in and out, but I could be wrong there. There's an S video in. There's your power, 240 volt, 100 to 240, and there's a power switch on there as well. Uh, now, as you can see, there's no RGB input. There's no, um, I don't think any of that expansion area is going to accommodate for RGB. And really, that is the uh, critical or the thing that the downfall of the monitor is that it is. Uh, it does have such a high line count at 750 lines, but it does not input RGB, which I really think is is a disappointment. I would certainly be a candidate for a mod to RGB mod it, because otherwise that tube's going to waste. Anyway, let's have a look inside it. In this case, we have the top off rather than the back for a change. It's very clean inside. A little bit of dust in there, but very colourful and clean. I like the wiring there on the edge on the side. Cable tied around nice and neatly. You know, the tube, of course, that's a big point of interest. Being a Euro Pro monitor, broadcast monitor, it's, it's always going to be interesting to see what's in there. But um, I like the sticker that they've put uh, on the corner there. At least it's quite accessible. You can tell what it is straight away. So it's a Philips and M34 monitor grade, 34 centimeter. You'd have to bet your bottom dollar that this tube would have been in a lot of Philips's computer monitors, been 14 inch, 34 centimeter in monitor grade. So they probably put it in the broadcast monitor as well. And um, that's about it from the inside there. The, the yoke there hasn't been, well, the convergence rings have not been adjustable, haven't been changed from factory. So there we go. Let's see a bit more on screen action.
Look at this menu system, would you? This does remind me of old BBC computers from school. Now it does have a fair menu system. I'm just going to kind of go through it a little bit just to give you an idea of what there is in there. Moir Cancellor, eh? Itself. It's interesting. And the alignment menu requires a password. I did have a look on Google just then, but I could not find the password. I'm sure a viewer out there will know what the default barcode password is. Hopefully that's all it is, is a default one. They can get in there and do some mischief. Remote control. Ah, uh, uh, sorry. Just a little bit more configuration. Color temp on screen display. Function table. Yeah, you can go 4, 3 or 16 by 9. Uh, the gears. So there is a bit there. Let's put on the NES again. Let's see if a light gun works, eh? Let's get Duck Hunt going. Now, you can hear sound, but that is not coming out of the monitor. Monitor does not have any speakers whatsoever. I've just got some crappy PC speakers hooked up. So let's quickly do this gun test. I wouldn't think there would be any problem with the monitor. You'd almost be assured that that is working 100%. Get it over near the edge and see what happens. Yep. Now we'll give the gun, the gun light phaser technology a pass there. As you can see, this pattern on the screen, it means I've got the signal generator hooked up to the monitor and it's hooked up via S video. You can see that looking quite square and converged very well. Here's a fairly curved screen. Let's go into some color bars. So the signal now, as I said, is S video and C cam. And that's successfully displaying. Let's go through the other signals to see what I can do. PAL 60, PAL N, PAL M, PAL, NTSC 4.43, NTSC J, NTSC M, and then we go off those signals all together. So it's fully compatible with what this test pattern generator can throw out. I won't do composite video because, let's face it, um, I've, I've done it before, it's the same result, it's compatible across the board with those signals said then. Um, so, in conclusion, I'd say the monitor is, is very capable, I think this one here is very, I don't think it's been used a heck of a lot, no burning, nice, nice and bright, sharp looking picture, but definitely has its hands tied behind its back without any RGB input. Now, I'm going to put in the description, I'm going to put a link or two to some documents uh, with specifications for the monitor. And there's a catalogue there that, that shows this monitor within what they call the viewing monitor range. So just your bare bone standard uh, monitors. This is part of that range. And then there's the next step up, which is master control monitors. And there's, an, uh, there's a 14 inch in that range that is 750 lines just like this, probably has the same tube, but it does have the RGB and sync input. So you definitely would want to go for that monitor over this one. I would recommend this if you can mod it to display RGB, but as it is, it's uh, it's got a tie, hands tied behind its back. Anyway, just want to do a quick one. I mean, it doesn't have RGB, so we can't really fully explore it. I didn't want to spend too much time on it. Anyway, thank you for watching and stay tuned for more. Bye.